take care of what you can handle in your life. And that's all you can do and hope and pray about the rest that it all works out. And, you know, in the end, uh, that's all we can do. Hi, I'm Charles Palminteri. The Wise, and I'm Michael Francis. The Wise Guy. You know, I never talk about politics. I, I always tell people, I'm not a Democrat, I'm not a Republican, I'm an independent, I like to vote for common sense. And I started talking about, you know, when my friends, uh, my friends, a lot of NYPD people who I support, they got jumped in Times Square. And I just was very upset. I went off on a rant. And um, my God, I got a million hits. And I was like, Jesus, God, this is like insane. So it seems to me that a lot of people are are really upset by this whole thing, by crime. And I mean, I always say, is it just in L.A. and, and New York or San Francisco? It, I mean, is it in Utah, Wyoming? Is, 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 is that kind of shit going on there? I mean, I don't know. Well, you know, Chaz, again, we don't want to get political, but we got to tell it the way it is. It's really in all the blues, the blue states and the blue cities. I mean, Los Angeles, very bad. San Francisco, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, uh, places like that, you know, and New York. And, and let me tell you, you know, really upsetting that these police got beat up and disrespected. And then there was another thing in the in the migrant uh, shelter. I don't know if you saw that. They were throwing things at the cops. And but the, the worst part about that for me was that they let these guys out with no bail. Yeah. You yeah. beat up police. And, and Chaz, I'll never forget, I was walking the line. I was 20 years old when Joe Colombo had the Italian-American Civil Rights League, right? right? I'm walking the line. I got a sign on about my dad that he got framed. I go across. We had 3,000 people on the on the line that day on, on 6th Avenue, on 3rd Avenue and 69th Street. I walk across with my wife and my girlfriend at the time to get a cup of coffee as I'm coming back, right, there's a couple of cops there. Some guy comes by in a, in a car and he yells out, oh, you guinea bastards, blah, 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 blah. So I yell back at him and say, hey, keep your mouth shut. The cop looks at me. He says, hey, you shut your mouth and get across the street. And I said, what are you getting mad at me for? You heard what the guy said. He got nasty with me. I got nasty back with him. I made a mistake. I'll be honest with you. I threw a punch at him. Chaz. Oh, God. Before I knew it, I had four cops on me, billy clubs, down on the ground, yeah. my mom screaming, my girlfriend screaming. They picked me up, dragged me, put me in the paddy wagon. And Joe Colombo happened to be there. He had the whole line, uh, break the line that were picketers, and he made them surround the paddy wagon so they wouldn't take me away. He negotiated with them for two hours before they let me leave. He said, this guy hit a cop. He's going to jail. He's getting arrested no matter what. Wow. And they took me down and they arrested him and they booked me. You know, I mean, you know, I, I got out of it after uh, I it ended up in disorderly conduct. But, you know, the way they treat you, you couldn't do that. Ever get away with hitting a cop. Never. Oh, my God. Ever. Ever. I mean, you got to respect the law. Otherwise, you have no law. It's very simple. You know, Absolutely. you got to respect the law, man. I'm, I, I'm just worried about. I mean, where do you think this is going to end, Michael? I mean, I mean I'm being serious now. I, no, where do you, you know, think? I, I don't know. I think people are getting upset with it. I think, uh, and again, with this whole migrant crisis and things happening in neighborhoods with people, they're starting to speak out and speak up. And, you know, one thing I did say, Chad, I, uh, I recently went over to Rumble on that platform. Because, you know, I, I'm passionate about my country. I love my country, regardless mm -hmm. of any else. And I want this country to be the same for my my seven kids and my seven grandchildren that it was for me and you. I mean, right. we had, you know, we had our problems, but America is a great country. And Absolutely. so I went to Rumble and I, I could talk there more freely than I can talk on YouTube and I can I can be passionate about what I believe. The people that are responding, the comments, people are very passionate and very upset about what's going on in this country. They really are. And I think they've had enough. You know, everyday people have had enough. The middle class is getting bombarded and banged out. I mean, the elites don't feel it. The people on the bottom, the poor, they always feel it. But it's the middle class now that's, that's really, I think they had enough. I mean it. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think maybe... It's gone so far one way that it, maybe it'll come back the other way. You know, I was just listening to this guy. I wish I remembered his name. He was talking in the 1970s. He was on the Phil Donahue show. And Phil Donahue said to him, you know, Phil Donahue, the ultimate progressive liberal, says to him, uh, but don't you think that capitalism and greed is wrong? And, and you got to hear this guy's answer. He just said to me, he said, who's not 
who's not greed? I mean, China doesn't run on greed. Uh, Russia doesn't run on greed. He goes, everything that ever happened in civilized world benefited from greed in a way. He said, Henry Ford, do you think he invented, a, they, you know, the government told him to invent a, 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 a car? No. He invented it for his own success. Einstein, he said, you think he invented all these theories just because the government told him to? That's how things get done. Any society that doesn't run on capitalism, self-achievement is a failed society. He said, name me one that doesn't. Name me one that doesn't. And, they, and Phil Donahue couldn't do it. So, you know, uh, I agree with that. Yeah, no, it's very, it's very true. Listen, capitalist is is the greatest policy or ideology in the world. That's that's how you make progress. That's how people yeah. progress in their lives. You know, I, I tell you, whenever they get mad at rich people, I say, well, who do you think employs the people that that make a living every day? Not poor people. You know, rich people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't get mad at people because they they've made it and they're wealthy, and uh, it's good for society. It's good for the country, but. Yeah, and, and and the problem with socialism, I remember when I was reading about it, it, it takes away people's dreams. You can't dream. In other words, if I want to be a, a scientist, a doctor, no, we tell them, no, you can't be a doctor, you're going to be a plumber. You know, I mean, you can't, you can't take away people's dreams. And that's why you have to have capitalism. You have to have people wanting to strive to better themselves. Otherwise, you end up with certain countries I mean, if you look at certain European countries, nobody wants to work. They say, why? Why do I have to work? The government pays me. This is great. You know, what did, uh, what did Stalin call them? Call them useful idiots. You know, yeah. and so you have to strive. You have to have dreams. I don't know. And I think I get nervous sometimes that our government wants to take our dreams away. I get, I get worried about that, you know? Well, listen, uh, you know, unfortunately... I, you know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And what I see, listen, I think this is historical in any nation. They they begin to enjoy power too much and they don't want to give it up. And right. I think even in a constitutional republic such as ours, people just enjoy the power that they have and they don't want to give it up. And I think, you know, when that starts to grow over a period of time, it becomes very dangerous. And, you know, look, Chaz, the thing that I see the most dangerous today, and I think there's two things that are very dangerous in our country right now. Number one, I think that the press doesn't report the actual news anymore. And people are not aware of everything that's going on. Right. The they, try to, they try to buffer or hide for whoever, you know, particular party they're supporting. They don't report the news like they did in our day when we were growing up. That's number one. And number two. Right. The worst thing ever is when any particular party starts to weaponize the Department of Justice, the FBI, or whatever, to go after their political enemies. Because, you know, I always learn this. If you give any government an inch, they're going to take a yard, and they never give it back. So yes, you have to protect your freedoms. You know, it's not a question of Republican, Democrat. We're not talking political. We're talking about people protecting their freedoms. Uh, that, you know, we, this country was built on. And um, it's the lust for power. Look, I've seen it on the street. Every time we had a war, it was because somebody wanted power and somebody else didn't want to give it up. And so we went to war. Right. You know, it's just it's just the way things are. You know, there was this, uh, I'm trying to find it right now. Uh, there's this thing called, signed into law by President Howard Taft in 1910, which the Mann Act, yeah, made it made it a, a felony to engage in interstate or foreign commerce transport of any woman or girl purchase of prostitution. Blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to see where, where where was it where you could not where you could not use propaganda against uh, your own country. You could use it against other countries, mm -hmm. but not your own country. And from what I was told that uh, when Obama came in at two thirds. Uh, 2013 that he changed the law where our own news people were allowed to lie to us. I mean, why, why would you do that? I mean, that bothers me. That really bothers me. You know, again, my happy with everybody know, was I happy with Bush when, you know, weapons of mass destruction and all that bullshit and Cheney. I was a big, I was, 
just hated all that. But why did the why did Republicans and Democrats have to have to always like seek power? And it just and who said it? I'm not sure. I don't want to say it was Hamilton or Madison. One of them, one of my founding fathers said, I dread the day. He goes, I know he said there's two parties, but I dread the day when one party feels that their own self-interest would be more powerful than the country. Mm-hmm. And he said it back then when they created the document. And boy, was he right about that. Damn, you know. Well, I could tell you something, you know, our founding fathers must have uh, been so impacted by an oppressive government uh, that the things that they said to protect us here in the United States were so brilliant. I know Thomas Jefferson said, I've never seen a democracy that hasn't at one point in time destroyed itself. He said, I've never seen that in the history of the world. Yeah. Again, it's because sometimes too much freedom and too much power, it's it's too intoxicating. And people say, I don't want to give it up. I don't want to yeah. give it up. Yeah. But, you know, we the people in a voting block need to be able to recognize that and say, hey, no, it, it can't go this way, you know. But it's hard. You know, you know another thing, Chaz, you and I have the luxury of maybe paying a little bit more attention to what's going on in the world and maybe what's going on in, in politics. But people that are striving to make a living every day, to put food on their table, to take care of their kids, you know, right. to get one paycheck to another, they don't have the luxury of really being informed as to what's going on. And so they make wrong decisions at times because they don't have proper information. You can't even get mad at these people. You got to understand, you know, because um, I do, I see it. And I, you know, you get comments on your, your channel. I get comments on mine and people are really struggling. And it's said that they they don't have proper information to make informed decisions on, and that's the that's the media's fault. I, I hold them accountable. Yeah, but I but I, I always say, to, in the media, what is? I mean, I I think about Walter Cronkite. He was there when we grew up, and I say, did he lie? Would he did he exaggerate? I don't know. I I I'd like to think about that. He didn't. That he just back then in the fifties and sixties, seventies maybe they told the truth. The news media told the truth, and I, when I say lie, they lie on both ends, both conservative and and uh, uh, you know progressive. So, could somebody tell the truth, please? Just the truth. Uh, I don't know. It worries me, Michael. It worries me. You know. Well, listen, I, 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 it worries you because you care the same way I care. And so these things, and you know, look, you know, I was watching Patrick Bed David. He was, uh, he was on a sit down with Bill Maher and Bill Maher was talking to him. They were going back and forth and they were talking about who's president or whatever. And Patrick said it right. He said, look, whatever president comes in, I'm going to do okay. He said, I'm, you know, fortunately I've got plenty in the bank and I'm going to do okay. Uh, He said, but it's other people that I'm worried about, you know, Uh, freedom is important to them. And, and, and that's the truth. You know, the people that that, that have money and are comfortable in their life, it doesn't really matter to them, but it's the majority of people that suffer um, when they're oppressed. And uh, I don't know, I don't know if it's going to turn around. You know, I am an extremely optimistic guy. My wife gets mad at me because every time, "Ah, don't worry about it, we're going to handle it. She says, don't that as well as the truth right but I'm, I'm i'm a bit pessimistic about the direction of this country and, and of the world right now I don't, I don't know i don't know if we're going to be able to come back i think i think this election is going to mean a lot um but who knows i mean we're going to see this is going to be a turbulent year for sure you know the, this election scares me i gotta tell you because I, I don't know which way it goes and whatever way it goes, I think I think there's going to be some big, big trouble. Do you? I mean, I do. Yeah, I do, because I, I think one side is really not going to accept the other side. I think there's so much. I guess the word is hatred. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Vitriol and hatred on either side that it, 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 it's you, there's going to be complaints galore, no matter who wins. Yeah. I mean, the last time something like this 
was the Civil War. Really? Yeah. I yep. cannot I cannot think of another time where there were both sides so hatred for each other. Uh was the Civil War. I mean they they fought they we we killed each other. I mean I hope it doesn't come to that, God forbid. And but sometimes you gotta go so far for everybody to like all of a sudden go, oh my God, we have to come together. I just hope it doesn't. I hope whoever becomes president tries to bring this country together. I, I, I don't know if somebody can, to be honest with you. I don't know. No, you know, you know what I believe? I believe that the two people that are running will not have the ability to do that. I think it would have to be yeah. some coming in fresh and I don't think we're going to see that in this election cycle so I think uh, it's going to be a tough four years regardless of who gets in yeah that's a good point yeah you might be right I mean could somebody could somebody come in and just be a little more moderate and sensible that's all I, I wow yeah if you think about it that's pretty depressing yeah and, um well, it's, I say, you know, put food away for a long time. Make sure you got your water. Prep everything because I think the the shit will hit the fan. And um, I hope not. Um, but I think you're right. I don't think either side is going to accept who <clears throat> whoever wins. No. Yeah, and like and like Patrick said, if if he wins, if whoever wins, I'm going to be okay. You're yeah. going to be okay. I'll be fine. But I care about, I'm a human being. I care about the country. I care about, I care about our country. I care about my, my grandfather and my uncles and relatives who died for this country. And, and this is a beautiful country, Michael. Oh, it really I is. You know, the, when we grew up, when we grew up it, it's, it's just a beautiful country. Democracy is not the best thing in the world, but it's the only system that works. It really is. So I, I just think that whoever wants to destroy this country, shame on you, man. Shame on you, really. But there are people out there who do want to destroy it. And that's, that's sad. That's sad. Well, I will tell you this, Chaz. And, I, and again, I have some deep concerns about people entering this country that we don't know who they are. That's yeah. that's very troubling. You know, the, the thing now is since Texas has shut that border down pretty much, they put up that razor wire. Now yeah. they're all coming in through San Diego, through California. Wow. So, you know, and that we're, we're a border state. And these poor people, you, you want to say that, are coming over a mountain in Mexico. That's a treacherous mountain to climb. And they're coming out and back down on the other side. And there's a the fence ends. The fence that's up there ends at a certain part. And you got to go over like boulders and everything to climb over that part and get into the country. And they're coming in big numbers now. So, you know, and you don't know who these people are. They're not vetted. And listen, I know how I know your heart and how you feel. And I feel the same way. You don't want to deny anybody that if they need something. But when you don't know who people are. And they right. come in and, and they got records and, and you know, what they do in their last country. Are these, are these people bad people, good people? We should at least know who's coming I, here. I, the least, could we do that? And that's what I said on my, on my podcast. I mean, you're letting people into your home. When you want to know who that person is, you're doing that. And then you're letting your own people have to be vaccinated when you're letting all these people in unvaccinated. If somebody could please make sense of that, I would be really happy, but nobody can. No. Nobody can. You know, I think people, uh, look, I'm an immigrant, you are, my family is, you got to come in the right way because you, by doing it that way is you slow it down a little bit and this way everybody gets something, but it's just slower. You know, slower. You just can't overpower a country. A country without borders is not a country. Not a country. No, that's one thing that at least Trump says, right? He says, if you don't have a border, you don't have a country because there's no boundaries. And it's uh, it's very sad what's going on. And uh, who knows where it's going to end. 
You know, but I, I get a lot of comments and a lot of people asking me questions. And I tell them, listen, in life, I've learned one thing. You can only control the things that you can control. And you can't let everything else worry you or bother you because it's out of your control. Right. Just protect yourself, your family, do the best you can to take care of yourself. And uh, and that's all you can do. Things are out of our control. What, what are yeah. we going to do? I mean, look. If I was one of, if, uh, if I was a migrant, I was broke. I had no money. My family. I, I would come here. I would say, "All right, let's get ready. Let's go. Why not? Let's try to help ourselves." And and I understand that, but you have to do it on the a controlled manner. That's all I'm saying. I don't think that's being unreasonable. I really don't. I really don't. And you want to give people stuff, but. You can't give everybody a cell phone and money in a hotel room. When you have our own homeless, our own United States citizens homeless, our veterans homeless, our school system in a shambles, our public school system, don't you have to help that first before you start spending two, three hundred billion dollars? It's insanity, Chaz. It's it's yeah. total insanity. And you know what? People are rising up because who gets hurt the most? The poor people, the middle class. Yeah. yeah. Resources are taken away from them. And they need I it. mean, look, yeah, you're right. Excuse me. I own a restaurant. And the prices that you have to charge now, people go, Well, this is really I go, it used to be shrimp when 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 not very expensive. Now it's like a joke. Fish steak is milk, eggs, everything. You have to raise the prices, otherwise you can't be in business. Jazz, I'll bet you didn't hear this yet, but somebody here in California, you know, all the insanity happens here in California. People yes. are absolutely insane. But do you know there's some, I don't know who he was. Uh, I don't even know his name. I don't even want to know his name. But do you know that somebody uh, put up a bill? They want the minimum wage, the minimum wage to be $50 an hour. I saw that. Now, does that even make sense? Does he even understand the ripple effect, how he puts people out of business, how prices have to be raised, how he, it doesn't, I, I, you know what I say to myself? How the heck can somebody like that be in charge of our welfare? I, I mean, is that person just trying to get like noticed maybe? Because how could you have, you know, people at McDonald's in certain places make fifty dollars an hour. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna price up a, a McDonald's hamburger is gonna be thirty bucks. I mean, it's yeah. Don't they understand the yeah. real? Effect? They have no no conception of reality. It's insanity. Yeah, I I don't uh, uh, I I don't understand that. I really don't. But I just you know. I just say, well, that's so stupid. I can't even pay that no mind. That's just dumb. But, and this guy's what? He's a congressman, this guy? He's an assemblyman or something, but he had the nerve to put this bill in front of uh, the assembly. I mean, it, I, when I looked at it, I said, I, I must have misread something. But right. it was right. serious. It was, it was absolutely serious. It's, it's, it's just insanity. You know what scares me? I look at some of these people and I say, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but how could my welfare, my children, my loved ones be in this person's hands? Right. Um, yeah. And, and, yeah. And it drives me crazy. It really does. Yeah. I I, I don't know. I, I don't know if they if they're dumb or they're just doing this to to create excitement. I I'm really confused by that. And uh, well, listen, like I said. All crazy things come out of California. <laughs> oh, New York. New York is right there, too. Come on. Yeah, the you know, book ends. California, book. New York. So yeah. That's what I always said. I go, because of all the mountains in the middle of the country, all the nuts, they roll to either side. They roll. <laughs> they roll to New York or they roll down to California. That's, that's how it truth. works. Yeah, that's how it works over there, you know? Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't get it, but uh, again... I love this country. I really do. This country's <clears throat> been great to me. Great to great to you. Um, where else could people like us do what we do? <laughs> and, yeah, absolutely. You know, be, <clears throat> and be okay, you know? So 
I, I traveled a lot, so did you. When you go to other countries and you see what they got to deal with, uh, I come back home and I go, God bless America. I really do. No, me too. Listen, you love the scenery and people are wonderful, and, but there's no place like home and no place like this country. And we just pray that it stays that way. Um, and we'll see what I happens. Really, it, yeah, I'm really interested to see what happens after the election. I, I, I would say strap on your seatbelt and hold on because I have no idea what's about to happen. I really don't. I have no idea. Usually I go, well, this is going to happen. I, I don't know. I really don't know. Could there be a absolute, uh, could it be a civil war? I mean, could there be violence? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Could it be like the L.A. riots or something? Maybe. The Watts riots, the Detroit riots? Maybe. I hope not. But, you know, interesting that the African-American community is really wanting to change. They want to, like, they, they're saying, hey, man, there's too many migrants here and we're not getting enough, And uh, uh, which is really great. I, I, I agree with it. I really do. You know what? They, they should be sounding the alarm and screaming because they, resources are being taken away from them and their kids yeah. to give to strangers that we don't even know who they are. Do you know all this crime in these neighborhoods? Uh, you know, the CVSs and Walgreens and, you know, all these drugstores. They they close up and they leave. I know. They leave because just people walk in there and steal. And, and who gets hurt? So the poor people, the minorities get hurt because they Absolutely. can't get their medication. They can't get anything. Everything closes up. Uh, you know, so I think they I think they had it, too. Even the, the Hispanics have had it. I think all Americans now have had it. That's enough. We got to yeah, change. I agree, and that's why I think if if we continue to see more of the same, we're going to have a we're going to have a rough year, and this is going to be God knows what's going to happen after the election. Either way, but uh, hey, you and I are okay. talking about it, trying to make people aware, and like we said, you know. Take care of what you can handle in your life, and, uh, and and that's all you can do. And hope and pray about the rest that it all works out. And you know, in the end, uh, that's all we can do. I totally agree with you. And uh, if the twenty twenty four election, I'm sure we'll all have a lot to talk about. You know, absolutely. All right. Well, I'm Chas Palmentary, the Wise, and I'm Michael Francis, the Wise Guys. And we'll see you next time. All Thank right. you.